Hello and welcome on this new episode of our marketing mix modeling. So in the last episode, we learned how to do how to create an automatic budget allocator using Excel Solver. Today, what we're gonna do, we're gonna autom automate the procedure on searching the hyperparameters for alpha and beta. So all the transformation are gonna be automatic. We just need to set up the formula that we we learned in the episode, I think, uh, four, right? So in episode four, if you didn't check episode four, please do that before starting this episode, because this is an, a, a little more advanced episode and you need to find and learn how to create all this stuff in episode four. So what we're going to do is to create a, an automatic optimizer to find our diminishing return and add stock. We're gonna use Excel, and Excel is an, an amazing platform. Obviously, it has some constraint, has some restriction, but you can, if you leverage all, all its tools, it's almost a no-code tool for data science. It, it's really, really good. So let's go to our model. Perfect. So we have it already here. And as you can see here, you have all the formula and the transformation. Just a little throwback. So what we did here, we had the raw data, all right? So we have week, sales, Facebook, TV, and radio. These are span variables. So input variables that should be independent. And this is the dependent variable, which is the output that we want to predict. Now, what we did here, it was because we want to have it, uh, we want to have this transformation as real as possible, I'm sorry, this one, uh, we want to transform our input variable, our media variables into add stock and diminishing return according to this formula. The formula we, that we use to transform an add stock is add stock t equal add stock t minus one. So the add stock the day before times beta, which is another parameter that has a value between zero and one plus spent at time t. So how much we spend at the exact date. Diminishing return, on the other hand, is add stock at time t, so this formula, to the power of alpha. Alpha is still a value between zero and one. The transformation is something like this. It's a little ugly, but you can follow it. Below, you're gonna see, and you're gonna receive all the template, the Excel template, and you, you can basically copy and paste the formulas as you want. Now, what we did after the transformation, so here, uh, we put, I think, 0 0.1, yeah, 0, 0 0.1 at the beginning. And here it was 1, I think, yeah. So as you can see, what we have here, we use a uh, linus regression, so linear regression here. We put uh, this variable as output and this variable transformed as an input. We run the regression, and then manually we tested, all right, what happens if our, oh, this is alpha, sorry. This should be one, this is, should be 0 0.1, oh yeah. And what we did, it was manually change, all right, what happens if we do 1.4? Does the R square increase? It doesn't seem to, 0 0.1, all right, so. Let's try to 0 0.05. Yeah, it increases again. Let's do alpha. So what happens if we do 1.7? It increases. And as you can, as you saw, it, it's manual. What we want to do today, we want to find a way on automatize, automate this part. So I'll open my solver. And what I want is I want to maximize my R square, and we know that our R square is this variable. How we're gonna do it, uh, changing these variables, perfect. We already selected these other parameters, alpha and beta, and we want to have all these other parameters lower than one and higher than zero. It's 0 0.0001. So it doesn't mess everything up. So I will do OK. Perfect. I'm going to use the GRG nonlinear algorithm. And then I'm going to click solve. It's going to take a little because this uh, 
this is kind of complex. There is complex calculation behind it. So we're going to click solve. And now what she's going to do, yeah, she's going to try a, a bunch of different stuff until it achieves the maximum value for our square. So probably I think that it's going to minimize this column. Let's see. The way he does it is basically uh, test the value of increasing one unit on, for example, on the alpha Facebook transformation. And then he tries until the R square doesn't grow anymore. And then he switches and starts testing a new variable. It, it, it behaves, these, autom these algorithms behaves like the human do, as I did in the episode four. So it's really, really helpful. Let's see here, we're really close. All right, so we basically find found the best variable. Oh, almost 0.926, which is really good. Okay. Right. Still optimizing. I think it's gonna take a little bit. So let's skip to the end, all right? So. Perfect. So the optimizer concluded its, its optimization. What we have here is an automatic op optimization and we went from 88% or 90% to increase our accuracy way more than we would, would do manually. Because that's, because this optimization allows us to optimize way quicker without human bias. Uh, we have now a model that, op that has a really, really high accuracy. So it, it has a, a percentage error of 7.9%, accuracy of 92.7%, uh, RMSC, so root mean squared error, about 1.41. So I would say pretty good. And, and that's it for this episode. So Excel is a super good beginning tool to optimize, create your first models and understand how to allocate better budget and generate insights that are gonna help you through the decision-making process about your marketing decisions and your growth decisions about your company. What I suggest you to do is to play a little with these multiple models. This is actually the next episodes are gonna be probably focused on creating something different from linear regression. Maybe try and find new models that can be used in order to increase accuracy. And from there, what we're gonna try to do is uh, test a little more models. Let me know in the comments what you want to see. If you're still interested about going deeper on marketing mix modeling using Excel, or you want to find out how to use Python to do this, uh, this modeling or R, check out our, the other course, the marketing mix modeling advanced course of using Facebook Robin. Uh, it's probably a, a really good step in the middle before we go and deep dive into the coding phase. And yeah, let me know. I generally want to create the content that you want to see. So let me know in the comments. Best.